Hey everybody and welcome to the new and improved second round Kickstarter edition. Today we're going to be taking a look at a handful of decks that we think are great decks, good decks, and decks that maybe just need a little bit of work this week. And so, Or a lot of bit of work. Or a lot of bit of work. So, what that really means is great decks. Decks that are coming out of the gate showing the information you need to know to feel comfortable backing them, such as printer, reasonable price points, fulfillment, all that great stuff that we always try and tell people to get on board with. Taking a look at a good deck. What is a good deck? Maybe it has the right foundation. It has a good price point, but it may be missing who's printing or who's fulfilling. Maybe it doesn't have enough pictures or enough information that people want to know to build that story and that connection with the deck. Then taking a look at a needs help deck. These decks are going to be decks that maybe have a good bare bones foundation there. It has some nice artwork, but they're just missing all of the important information. The price point could be crazy $30. It could be that they don't tell you who they're printing or fulfilling with, or it could be that they only have two pictures on there and the art looks great, but we know nothing else about it. And we're going to touch up on some sketchy campaigns, the campaigns that you might want to think twice about backing. So before we jump into it, let's take a quick word from our sponsor. Join us as we celebrate the marvelous and fascinating things that surround us all in the palm of your hands. You will be mesmerized. Follow us on Instagram at Marvelous Decks and at MarvelousDecks.com. All right, so jumping into this week's great deck. This week, we're taking a look at the Nabia playing cards. I think this campaign really was put together very well. You know, obviously a great campaign isn't going to be a perfect campaign. And so out the gate, I think there's one area where this could use a little bit of improvement. And that's the goal. When you really yep. factor in everything about this campaign, the shipping costs, the Kickstarter fee, the ultimate printing costs, you know, this goal's a little bit lower than it probably would be to break even. But I think that kind of goes to a, a decision for the creator as well as a lot of times you can fund a campaign successfully and still lose money on it. And a lot of times people lose money in the shipping. Is that something you're, you're okay with, you know? Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. I think that for me, that was the only thing that kind of jumped out as you know, needed a, a second look, you know, but uh, obviously $5,000 is definitely a reasonable goal. You know, I would like to see about 6,500, um, at least 6,500, 7,000. Yeah, I think. And that would be comfortable for me. You know, absolutely. I think that ends up covering the shipping and the fees and everything. And you come out yeah. breaking even on this campaign, which ultimately, you know, really becomes a creator decision, whether you're looking to break even, looking to make money or looking to potentially lose money, but you want to get the deck out there. So right. let's take a look at what makes this a great campaign. So I have to say, I think, you know, out the gate, the use of the subtitle there and the title itself are all very clean, very clear cut. Nabia playing cards, a celebration of Korean heritage inspired by Soul's sparkling skyline printed by USPCC. I love the fact that they include that printed by USPCC in the, in the subtitle because it shows up then on that front page, draws people in and builds that confidence right from the jump. Yeah. Taking a look here, they have a little bit of an update in there. I would have probably used that as a update in the actual update tab versus on the main page because it pushes down the story, but it's relatively small, so not a big deal there. We jump right into a story here, though. Visit Seoul, South Korea, and you'll see modern skyscrapers standing next to grand palaces dating back centuries. Really starts to set the scene for an amazing story to draw you in and gain your interest there. We roll into some features here talking about printed by USPCC, fulfilled by gamblers, bespoke mirrored back design. The one thing I would like to see here also is just what stock is going to be printed on with USPCC. It makes a good uh, point for the features. But then you dive into this whole photo montage for the deck and then end with that like beautiful skyline pictures of South Korea there showing that. Dude, I, I love yeah. how they put a couple images just to tease you a little bit. Yep. Then give you that skyline, yeah. you know, I, I think it's really cool. It's, it's, are it's a great way to make that connection, too, because when you first look at this, if you've never been to Seoul, which personally I haven't, my first question is, right. all right, what makes these blues and these purples relevant to that skyline? And they do a great job visually creating that connection, which I think is so yeah. awesome. You dive into the tuck design here, and, you know, this is something that Steve and I talk about a lot is the right order of the cards, and I think tuck is the great way to look at it first. You know, I always like to see a progression through of how you would normally open a deck of cards. You open the tuck, you look at the back design, you look at the ace of spades, and then you start going through the deck. I think that's always a fun way because it makes a personal connection with the way they're displaying the decks. 
Yeah, agreed. Shows off the tuck really nice, and I love that it's a very minimalist tuck as well. And it has a little bit of text scattered in between the image, which is good rather than going, you know, there's five, six, seven images deep without some text littered in between. Exactly. And even a simple like little coordinates of soul, which A, I think is an awesome little touch on the tuck, but also just using that little bit of text there to explain what it is really creates this connection that he's that this storyline is doing a great job doing. So yeah. Nabi, the phonetic pronunciation of butterfly in Korean. So then we start understanding cool. the title of it and how that ties into the back design, which is really cool. I would have definitely liked to see that up top, but it's then it's there, which is a bonus. hundred <laughs> percent. And I think, you know, tying it into the back design makes sense, but it is still obviously present on yeah. the, on the tuck as well a little bit. So yeah, tying it into the story would have been cool. Um, let's go. So this is, I think, an, an interesting move here. And I know when I had actually seen a, a previous version of this deck, it didn't have any sort of people shaped courts. You know, part of the feedback I had given on this was that people are always leery when they don't have kings and queens they recognize easily. Not to say they have to be standard, right. but this is an interesting way of utilizing the color and the theme in a creative way to still have those silhouettes of the kings and queens, which I think works great. I think some people are going to love or hate that, but that then becomes a personal preference thing and not so much about the campaign itself. Yep. These fun little pips are awesome too. They kind of remind me of like emojis. This reminds me of a riffle shuffle deck. <laughs> it does have that kind of riffle shuffle vibe to it a little bit. I'll definitely agree. Uh, the bright colors, the vibrancy, but also in the in the clean way they put together this campaign as well. Yeah. And they may have modeled it by that. You know. Yeah, which, I mean, that's something yeah. we always recommend is checking out those Riffle Shuffle campaigns yeah. for, for good, sure. you know, theme and templates there. So, yep. two jokers, add-ons. Awesome, we get into the add-ons here and it talks about the poster. Interesting take on it. Um, and also it looks like you can potentially pick up their previous deck from a previous campaign. Always a smart idea. If this is a second campaign for you and you have overstock from a previous campaign, utilize it as a sales channel. It always makes sense to do that. Um, yeah. The one thing I would say here is the pledges section you probably could have done without. It's a little redundant because people are going to be going to the second side there to see that, but yeah. doesn't hurt. I would have liked to see maybe some stretch goals there. We have the shipping. Same thing, you know, a lot of times what ends up happening there to clean that up, people usually put it in some sort of table. It makes a little bit more sense versus just the text because then it's consolidated more so. For every deck pledge, awesome, they're donating a dollar. So that's that's awesome in my book. Risks and challenges, again, this is always a tough one. I think it's something that, you know, people don't always touch on in an expansive way. Actually, a great example for this one is Luke Wadey's Arrow V2 campaign this week has a great risks and challenges section. Really comprehensive, but, and, and we're looking at a price. We're looking at price-wise. Price point for this deck is $17, which to Perfect. me, I think is great. You know, obviously the early birds, let's see what we got here. The early birds look like they already kind of ended for some of the earlier ones. Yeah, for a single deck, would have been a $15 deck ship early bird, which Crazy. is great for something this like visually appealing. So yeah. I really dig this, Kevin Kim. You did a great job with this campaign, man. Yes. So let's take a look at this week's good deck. A Newfoundland mm. deck of cards. I have to say the artwork. Newfoundland. Newfoundland, <laughs> however you want to say it. <laughs> Newfoundland deck of cards. I have to say, though, I love the artwork on this. I think it's awesome. Crushing their goal, Bro, obviously. This artwork is dope. It really is. It's super fun. Um, like we talked about a little dope. bit with the previous great campaign, obviously the goal on this is a little concerning. Not so much for the backer's point of view, but for the creator's point of view. Because ultimately, yeah. if you're printing this deck with a reputable printer like USPCC or Card of Monday, even at a thousand run, $3,900, you're going to eat a ton on shipping. A thousand dollars at USPCC bare bones, you're looking at $3,300 right there, minus a 10% Kickstarter fee. You would be barely hitting your printing with that goal there. So yeah. it really, you know, shipping does come into play big time with a lot of these goals. So that's one of the things that I think for this campaign would be really helpful to help make it from good to great. Um, but, I mean, good thing is, is they crushed it, so it's not gonna be an issue. Exactly, but, but that's not, yeah. Definitely something, uh, you know, some of these creators need to be aware 100%. of. 100%, so Graham, great job on that. I love the fact that this is funded so well also, because it is a fun deck. Uh, we tie into the story here as well. 
brings in the fact that it's going to be manufactured by USPCC in bold. I think the one thing for me is that's easy to overlook as you're scrolling through quickly, which is why I always like to see like a feature section with the bullet points, because I think it allows you to consolidate a lot of the important information in one place. But so far, the story is really cool there. I love yeah. I really do love the look of this. So he has these wood cuts from 2013 and then the newer ones we're seeing here. So this has obviously been a long term uh, project, which I think is cool. Yeah. Chose the card designs and again, great little bit of story continuation and text under each one talking about the theme for each of the suits, which I think is always helpful and ties people into it. So let's see. And then. All right. And so this is where this really becomes a good campaign, not a great campaign. You'll notice right yeah. away. One of the things that's missing is we don't know what the tuck case looks like even more. Or the back. More, yeah. Even more importantly, the back design, you know, again, talking or even really the aces here. So there's a lot of areas where creative aspects of it can make or break a deck because what I'm seeing here are awesome looking courts. But if you have terrible back designs, I don't know if I would necessarily back this. That's, that that can be a really make it or break it moment for me. And I actually really like the courts for this campaign. I would probably back this myself, even unknowing of what the back design looks like, but I'd hesitate there. And I think being- What if it doesn't come in a tuck box? We've seen some campaigns that come in the plastic cases or a bag or, you know, yeah. what, what I want to know what it comes in. If it doesn't come in a talk box, I'm out. Yeah, no, and I and I 100% agree. I think there's, you know, this is again, why it's a good campaign, not a great campaign. Some of the important details like A, who's going to be fulfilling, B, who or what is the back design going to look like? C, what is the tuck going to look like? What stock is it being printed on by USPC? Probably plays a little bit lesser of a role in this because it's clearly more of a collector's deck. So bicycle versus B, crushed versus non-crushed doesn't play as big of a part, but it's still good information to know. I think those simple facts in here would have definitely made this a great campaign. And while we're already seeing a huge following backing this right now, the cool thing about it is this speaks to so many more people than just people from Newfoundland. So right. getting- Yeah, so it's yeah. Definitely, it's definitely something that I think if it had all that other information, this would be at double uh, the goal it's at right now. Exactly. So again, this is really a good campaign. Let's see what the price point is here too. Looking at 21 ship. So the one thing I will say too, is I did notice that it mentioned residents of St. John's who want to pick up their decks, you know, reach out about local. That does make me think the fulfillment may very well be self-fulfilled. But again, that's something that's yeah. worthwhile to put in there. You want to give as much information as possible. So really to elevate this from a good campaign to a great campaign, Throw up that back design image, throw up a couple text uh, tuck renders. And ultimately, price point, I could probably say at $21, if there's foil and some embossing and some more intricacy, that may make sense. If it's a relatively standard flat tuck, no embossing, no foil, this to me is more of a $17, $18 deck ship. So this is where okay. the, that information comes into play because I don't know if I genuinely would pay $21 for this yet without knowing all of the other information and what actually goes into the deck and building up that cost. So, yeah. you know, I, again, I think it's awesome that this is funded, that there is so much momentum behind it because it is really great artwork, but I think that number could be higher should that other information be there? Because I'm sure we're not alone in thinking, okay, well, what does the back design look like? What does the tuck look like? Is there any sort of, you know, enhancement to any of that? Is there going to be, I mean, heck, there could be metallic ink on the back of the deck and that would make that $21 much more justified. Whereas right now to me, this as, you know, with what I know about it is a $17, $18 deck. Right. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Okay. Let's take a look at this week's needs help deck. Oh, bro. So bro, <laughs> this is an interesting campaign. And obviously you can see a couple things right out the gate that pop out. I love the fact that this deck tries to build on nostalgia that a lot of people, especially in the collecting card community, you know, fit in that demographic. I think there's, there's promise here, but there's a lot that needs to be fixed to make this functional campaign. You know, there's a couple things that stand out to me as, you know, red flags. There's a couple things that stand out as just not having enough information. The first thing we can see that this is a 10 day campaign. It actually Dude, launched today. It just got another backer. <laughs> get, hey, there we go. Four backers. But the interesting thing about that is very rarely do we see a 10 day campaign in a Kickstarter for playing cards. The reason being 
Normally, even great creators need 14 days to get the maximum they can out of it. Most are going for 30 day. 14 to 30 days is really the ideal. Anything less than 14 minutes, a first time creator, to a lot of people will scream, you know, that that scam flag. They want to get in and out as quick as possible, take the money they can and be done with it. In addition to that, the goal is pretty low depending on where these are going to be printed. 4,000 goal, you know, again, shipping comes into play. Kickstarter fees come into play. Is this actually a goal that's going to get this fulfilled completely? If not, is there a chance that it funds and then doesn't get fulfilled because there just wasn't enough money? We've seen that in the past where a creator goes in with good intentions and just can't actually get to the point of fulfillment. So. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it with reputable companies. A hundred percent. And I think, you know, those are some of the first things that stand out to me. The fact that there's a video on this shows that some effort was put into this. So I wouldn't say it immediately jumps out as a scam, but it definitely seems that it wasn't fully thought out initially. So floppy disk playing cards, great title, old school floppy disk themed playing cards. Because you have such a short subtitle and it's very repetitive of the initial, I would actually use that to build your story starting there and also throw in who's going to be printing. So we get into the story here and we can take a look. Remember the old school floppy disks? Interesting thing about this, like I said, it plays on nostalgia, but you also have to realize that most people who have not seen a floppy disk are not going to be drawn into this campaign. If you're okay with that, that's perfectly fine from a theme point of view. Um, I love those and carry them with me everywhere I go. The, <laughs> the interesting thing about this is tense comes into play because I love, yeah, I love I those love. and carry them. Yeah. Sounds like you still have a floppy disk in your pocket. You very well may. And you know what? If you do. If you do, cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm kind of weird, but cool. Yeah, it, it's interesting to see there. Um, so we get into the deck a little bit. The story, I think, when you're really trying to play a nostalgia, it needs to be a little bit longer. It doesn't really build the nostalgia you're hoping for. Um, so I think there may be something where you can continue to build it out. About the deck, made from 320 GSM, premium finished paper, stick. So that should be stock. So make sure that spell spelling errors are accounted for with linen effect on the surface for smooth shuffling. Maybe it was printed with a paper stick. So I don't know who's going to be printing these. That's one of the first things that should be addressed. The use of linen to me could be a lot of printers, but a lot of times now is synonymous with NPC. So maybe this is an NPC deck, but I don't know that. And I'm hesitant to make any assumptions there. Also about the deck, one sentence is surely not enough to know about it. Um, so far, we've seen the tuck in the back design. So that's something. Uh, then we get into back design. Custom made foil design in back resembles a floppy disk. The prototype shown in video is handmade for production. We are discussing with some, some well-known printing companies. We'll decide the printing company according to the number of pledges and post an update. 100% oh. the wrong move. People will back based on who's going to be printing. There have been significant controversies in the community where someone says, hey, I'm going to print with one company and then switches out and prints with another company. People want to know this from the jump because it helps make their decision. Also, if you're actually looking to foil that centerpiece and the disc like slide, there's actually only so many printers you'd be able to use. You can't use MPC or you can't use MPC for this. You can't use USPCC for this. You could use Cardamundi, you could use Legends, you could use Noir, but those all have very different followings between them. This is actually a really Excellent. interesting deck and to me, initially goes more towards cardistry than collector. So Noir would be out. Legends is on the fence, Cardamundi would be ideal, but now you're talking about a pretty significant goal to get a feasible cost for a foiled Cardamundi deck. I, I think... A I mean, this is where I think a little language comes into play is because custom made foil design. Does that just mean metallic? Does that mean like, what does that mean? Yeah, Foil has a very specific connotation yeah, with this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, okay, so, and I think that's okay. one of the interesting things about it. And again, you know, when you come to a campaign that clearly needs help, a lot of times it's because they have an idea, but this is something that should have been a step one drawing board versus ready for prime time here. And a lot more information is needed to really make this a campaign that's ready for prime time. I think from a nostalgia point of view, the back design and the tuck would hit with a great crowd. Let's get into the face cards a em little bit. Embossed oil effect. Yeah. So this also. No. No. So and the interesting thing about this, we've seen embossed playing cards before. NPC's done it. They use that clear ink on it. Yeah. They handled like trash. And yeah, I mean, they've done they've done the impressions, I think, the impression series, which is the same thing, yeah. just in color. So again, this kind of causes confusion as to who's going to be printing. And it, to me, what this means is 
Again, you're still in early planning phases. You haven't realized that there's only specific printers who are willing to do this. And so what happens if this funds and it turns out that you actually can't complete it because the ideas you had just aren't possible in the current climate? With all that in mind, this is something that taking it back to the drawing board and doing the research ahead of time will ensure that your backers feel confident in the fact that this can actually be completed once it's created or once it's funded. Um, partially visible the design to maintain the floppy disk look-alike. Also, the language there is a little bit off. I wouldn't say look-alike, I'd say vibe or feel. Um, with that in mind, though, this makes this a non-usable deck of cards. This is not something you're going to be able to use for poker. It's a non-standard deck. It's an interesting take on it where it's almost a, a relief of the actual court card and then the disc label has the name or the card on it. I'd be curious to see what this looks like for the pips. To me, that's a big thing there because do the labels just read nine of clubs what does it actually look like that's something you should be showing if you're doing a non-standard deck because people are going to be curious about that also the interesting thing about it is that notch cut again adds to who's actually going to be able to do this printing that's a very specialized thing that a lot of places are going to charge significant amounts of money for because they don't have the processes or the machinery in place to make it an automated process are you going to get these decks ahead oh. of time Cut I'm going to cut yeah. each one with a scissor. So I was just going to say, like, are you going to get these at home and sitting there cutting them? And so there's a little bit of variation between them. If that's the case, like, cool, that's awesome. But make sure that you're putting that information out there, because right now there's a lot of open questions as to who actually could even create this at the current point in time. Let's get into, yeah, let's get into this tuck box. The other thing I will say, too, there's just not a lot of text information for all of this. The story was that short little block up front. You want that story to roll through the entire campaign. Custom design, yeah. Custom tuck box design with see-through cuttings. So where is the see-through cuttings on this as well? That's something that should be indicated. I'm assuming it's this like top little square here. Yeah. The one thing with that top one is it's gonna affect the longevity of the flap. Stretch goals, numbered seals at 6,000, free shipping to the US at 10,000. The interesting thing about that is I don't buy into the idea of making stretch goals that are region specific because it excludes potential backers. Also, people have already paid for shipping, so are you going to refund that money, or what does that free shipping come, how does that come into play? Does, does my, geez, $31 pledge. Hold on. <laughs> hold on here. So hold, hold on. It says, it says black silver gilded edges. Yes. Is that what I think it is? Silver gilding? Or is it the black just from the deck with... So it sounds like it's going to be two different gildings on the edge, depending on the part you are. So yeah, that does not, that, that's not going to happen. Yeah. So the other thing about this too, and if we take a look up here, um, made from 320 GSM, 310 GSM. So there's inconsistencies in the tiers as well. So here's a brick option and a two brick option. So the brick option, the two the brick end. option puts it at $12 a piece, which does not make sense that $31 for a, a single twelve dollars each for two bricks. i mean this isn't a third even even with gilding and all this like a i don't even know if this deck is feasible but at 31 dollars, that's an expensive deck for a first time creator with a deck that has a nostalgia play but skip the gilding skip the foil go with metallic ink make this a 12 dollar deck 17 ship and it would have potential ultimately don't, don't even go metallic ink go, yeah, go standard, standard cmyk yeah. make the deck you know ten dollars with six dollars shipping if you have to make it a little more but what it comes down to is you know, i mean even 31 dollars for a gilded deck is not a lot but the fact of the matter is is you can't have a 31 dollar deck with a single and then a, a, a 24 deck tier at 12 dollars a piece you're losing money on gilding that deck 100%. and let's be honest if you're not gilding with a reputable company the gilding is going to be trash and i'm still curious as to how that five dollar shipping comes off at the end because if I hit 10 if you hit ten thousand dollars and now my shipping is free there's no refund shipping option in Kickstarter like it's either free or yeah. it's not so do you include something else for them to account for that five dollars or is that really just kind of a, a not well thought out stretch goal there so again there's a lot here that needs to make this campaign feasible in addition to that, unbelievable. And I think this is one that really falls on that borderline of I need help versus is this a real campaign?
And to wrap up this week's decks, we want to take a look at one that really stood out to Steve and I as a deck that people should just be cautious of. There's a lot of red flags with this deck that make it seem like it could be, you know, a little bit of a... Scammy. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit scammy. Perfect, perfect word for it there. So a couple things stand out to this deck. First off, A, I think the idea behind it is actually really cool. It looks like they're trying to utilize a very custom box to hold the deck, which I love to see that creativity. But we all know that custom boxes usually come with a very significant price tag. We're looking here at a goal that we would consider low, even if this was being printed by USPCC as a bare bones deck. $5,000 probably doesn't cover shipping and printing and all of that. So that right there is an interesting kind of first red flag. Second off, we take a look. Title looks good. I don't, don't want to cut. I mean, it says Grim. It says Reapers a lot. Yeah. Yeah, hold on cut there cut there and okay. second off taking a look at it again this is a very short campaign taking a look at when this actually launched this is a 14 day campaign so again unless you're an established creator coming out with a 14 day campaign is a risky move in addition to having a low goal that makes it very difficult we then get into the fact that you know all of this is renders and that's perfectly fine but having no text to talk about Who's printing? Who's fulfilling? Which they do actually talk about gamblers right there. But so who's printing? Who's going to be making the tough box? Who's going to be doing the printing? It looks like the deck is gilded as well. So there's a lot of questions here that come into play. How are you printing a even a short run? 400 to 500 decks with metallic numbered seals, embedded artificial gemstones, I mean, there's a lot of things in here that just don't add up price-wise. Here, here's my question. When, when you have something so entailed as this and, and so involved, you need to have a prototype done. I, I want to see how this thing works. I want to see if it's actually even doable. You know, I've seen some amazing 3D uh, work done by Lorenzo with Stockholm. You know, and and this is kind of like the idea behind Keymaster, right? Yeah. Is this amazing 3D box that your deck goes in. But I, I want to see that it's actually been created and the deck even fits in it. So the interesting thing is here, and we'll take a look here. We prefer digital printing to achieve the required effects. All right. So we print with local printing company, which high standards. So again, you got spelling and grammar mistakes out the jump. Who's the local printing company? Even if no one knows the name, putting the name there adds validity to this campaign. Printing will be done using German-made linen finished stock of 310 GSM delivered by Gambler's Warehouse. Awesome. The only thing to me that stands out about this campaign as being done right is you told us who's going to be delivering it. You haven't yeah. told us who's going to be printing, if this is even feasible. I mean, listen, there's a lot of moving parts we can see here too with this talk. Like... This to me stands out as being a very expensive deck with a very low goal. And if we take a look at the price point here, $45 a deck shipped isn't unreasonable considering if this becomes a feasible deck, what it all is going to entail with, you know, added pieces that come off the front end kind of reminds me a little bit of some of the Steve Minty decks where he used the 3D printed metal for like the Ascension decks. But like those were expensive decks as well. Fine, the price point is there for the deck. If you sell... 200 decks, or if you sell 110 decks, 120 decks, you hit your goal. Cool. Is that goal going to cover the cost for printing these yeah. decks? Like, that's yeah. the one thing to me, especially with such an intricate deck. It's very easy to all of a sudden be in the hole for double your goal because of this front work. Yeah. On top of that, I'm curious what this is going to be made out of now. So we have embedded with artificial gemstones, metallic reaper logo, Okay, so is this actually going to be 3D printed metal? If if so, that's expensive. Like, what, What's the other tiers we have on here? Let's see. We have a 40, a 70 for two. 70 for two. S same shipping, though. Yeah. Same shipping. Yeah, which if this is... I mean, here's the thing. A deck of cards costs $5 to ship. A deck of cards with metal on it is going to cost you a lot more than $5 to ship. Especially for, you know, two of them. And a brick for 280. So, like the price point on this comes down so far as well that there's just a lot of red flags on this deck. I personally 
think it's a cool looking deck. I'd love to see this become a real thing. I would be very cautious backing this with the minimal information there. The other thing that stands out to me as well is if you happen to read through the comments, there are a novel's worth of comments here accusing the creators of being rude. Them saying they're refusing to do a prototype. Like, here's the thing. Customer service doesn't come naturally to people, but people get up in arms and cancel campaign pledges when you don't respond to them on Kickstarter. You know what's worse than that? Responding without information and telling them you're not going to do something and not answering their questions. That's almost worse you know than worse not responding. what's worse than that? Scamming people. <laughs> That's what's even worse. Ah. <laughs> uh, and this is the thing, like, so all playing card campaigns, physical products have posted prototype on their product page. While that may not be the case, you're doing something very creative in a way that people want to see. Using other campaigns to justify you not doing it is not the best approach to this. Come up with a business justified approach. This guy's like going back and forth. It's like this pains <laughs> me. I mean, honestly, even if this isn't a scam, the attitude of the creator here would actually make me back away from this campaign. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's a shame to see because the creativity is there, but this, everything about this, to me, represents a very suspect campaign. Yeah, be, be very careful uh, dealing with this campaign. That's what I would just say. 100%. If you want to back it, go for it. But uh, I would be very, very careful. All right. What's in the update section? What does it say in the update section? There's Nothing. literally a zero oh, there. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. It looked like there was two. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. The, that old eyesight. Maybe there should be. That old eyesight. Maybe there should be. <laughs> so now we're going to... Bro, I'm old now. <laughs> now we're going to try something fun and new that gets us a little bit out of the playing card realm here. Steve and I each picked a fun campaign this week that we think is just awesome, that we guys think you may enjoy, you may not enjoy, but we enjoyed it. So let's take a look at what we have this week. First off, this was my I, I love, pick. I love the differences that we chose, so it's going to be fun to see what people think. Absolutely. So this was my pick. I absolutely love this Dungeon Alchemist AI-powered map-making software for tabletop RPGs. Anyone who's into D&D, &D, this is such a cool concept. 100% recommend you check out the trailer on this, if nothing else. Basically, it's a software that you have running on your computer, and when you need to create a map for a game or anything like that, you go in, you select the size, you select the theme, you drag and drop rooms on it, and the AI actually creates all of that for you. To me, the price point on this is phenomenal for what it is. You get into the... Uh, uh, the software itself for $36 lifetime license, which I think anyone who's a genuine dungeon master or game master knows the, the value of this software. This is something you can use indefinitely. It just looks awesome. Like, it's such a cool idea. And I know how much tabletop games are becoming, you know, even more and more mainstream now. So I'm excited to see people using technology to make it that much better. Yeah, dude, I mean, they crushed 2. their 2.1, 2.2 almost. 2.1 I mean, million with 41,000, almost 42,000 backers. It's awesome. Tyler, we're getting into RPGs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I love this campaign, though. I think it's super awesome. And the cool thing is, too, tons and tons of comments. And I bet you if we go in there, there's a lot of feedback from the actual collaborators and from the people who are running the campaign. So excellent customer service on it. Steve, let's check out your campaign for the week. Oh, bro, it's just like yours. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. That's the difference between Tyler and I. Mine is a bath towel, and I'm I'm kind of a bath towel snob. I'm not gonna lie. I uh, anyway, let's let's dive into this. So, 282,000. Um, you know, it's it's crushed its goal. Its goal was eight thousand dollars. It's got almost three thousand backers. Uh, there's three thousand other backers that love towels just as much as me. Um. Towel is, you know, super cool looking. I love that waffle effect on towels. Uh, they are definitely more pricey than your standard towels. This one comes in, I think, at $25 free shipping in the U.S. For a, for a um, single towel, these are bougie towels, but I got to say. They're bougie, bro. I'm all about the bougie towels. <laughs> and, and the cool thing is it comes with a bougie carrying bag. So, you know how, like, if you're going to the beach or something, not that you would take this on a beach towel, but... <laughs> Uh, if, if you're going to a pool party or something, and usually you carry your your towel or whatever, but this one comes with a, a dope similar uh, bag as the towel. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I wish it came in white, but I can deal with that charcoal color or that, you know, that gray, but check out the bag, dude. 
It's like made out of the towel material. That's so cool. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, again, you know, I, I think it's really cool to have a nice comfy towel. I hate towels that basically, you know, you dry your body off and you still kind of feel wet. You know, a towel that's as hefty as this will definitely soak up the water, my friend. Definitely check out this campaign, guys, if you are a <laughs> towel snob like Steve. But I gotta say, man, I think that was a really interesting campaign. What things are you guys planning on backing this week outside of the playing card world? Also, let us know what you're backing this week. Let's take a look before we sign off here at a quick word from our sponsor, and then we're gonna tell you all the decks that are up this week. Join us as we celebrate the marvelous and fascinating things that surround us, all in the palm of your hands. You will be mesmerized. Follow us on Instagram at Marvelous Decks and at MarvelousDecks.com. All right, let's jump into this week's decks. Thanks everyone for checking out this episode of Deck and Around Kickstarter Edition. Let us know what you think in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe. Peace.